Okay, so uh, refraction of light. When light goes from one medium into a um, different medium, one into the other, um, it can either slow down or speed up, depending on the relative densities. Or it goes faster in the less dense medium, like air. Uh, it goes its maximum speed through nothingness, which is a vacuum. That's the speed of light in the vacuum, right? That C. Remember that C, by the way, is um, 3 times 10 to the positive 8 meters per second. All right. So when light goes into a, a, a more dense medium, it slows down. When light comes out of a more dense medium and into a less dense medium like air, it speeds up. Okay. Um, and if it hits it straight on, it just keeps going in a straight line. But if it hits the boundary at an angle, it's going to bend. It's going to deviate from its original path. OK, um, so what I would like you to do right now before we finish this is just pause this video and when I finish this next, next sentence and go look at the um, refraction demo that I have. It's linked to the um, to that to the page. Watch that refraction video um, and then come on back to this video and pick up right here. Okay, I'm, I'm going to just pause. Stop. Okay, I'm going to assume you saw that where I had that piece of plastic and the red light, and you noticed that when it, the light went from um, the air, which we're going to use an index of refraction of one, okay, into um, the gla the plastic. I haven't defined, sorry about the index of refraction. Sorry, I got ahead of myself. Um, it deviated from its original path, right? I think I had it going from the air. I'll go from here. It was coming in, I think, at 45 degrees. So that's the incident ray. That's the, it's coming into the plastic. So this is air. This is plastic. OK. Um, and when it goes into the plastic, it slows down. The wavelengths bunch up, slows down. And it did something like that. I forget what the angle was. I made that video this morning. I think it might have been like 27 degrees. I'm going with that anyhow. Um, so. It's faster in the less dense air. It's slower speed in the more dense plastic. Um, the waves are waves are longer, longer wavelength when it's going faster. Shorter wavelength. I know that's hard to read. Shorter wavelength. They, they bunch up when they're going slower. So the frequency of the light doesn't change. Right, the frequency is really fast. The fastest anything can travel is in a vacuum because there's nothing to bump into, all over the spread out wavelengths because they're going so darn fast. But that's the same frequency as when it slows down, like in diamond. There's lots to bump into in diamond. On diamond is very optically dense. It's it slows light down a lot, um, and so because it slows down, the waves bunch up. But the frequency is the same. That's an important point. If it goes straight, if I had a light beam going straight, it would go fast, bump into this, keep going in a straight line, but go slower. You only get this bending if it hits at an angle. Uh, remember, I measure all angles to the normal. This matters. Uh, OK, for the homework tonight, you're going to be calculating um, the index of or calculating speeds in um, various substances. So we use this thing called the index of refraction. It uses a lowercase n. It has no units, and uh, it has no units because it's a speed over a speed. It has no units, and it's never anything but positive. And it can never be less than one because the that by definition, it's the speed of light in the vacuum, which is the fastest anything could go. So the, new, the denominator is the speed of light in the other substance, like water or glass or whatever. All right. Um, and this is always slower. So the, the denominator is always less than the numerator. That's why the number can never be less than 1, because the denominator can never be, can never be greater than the numerator. So the, the, this is always 
Well, it's one for a vacuum because that would be C divided by C, the number divided by itself, or greater than one. And the greater than one is what we're really interested in, right? Because again, it's the fastest right here. That's three times the gate. The speed in something else uh, is going to be less than that because it's slowed down. So the values for these things are always um, going to be greater than one. Now, going through air, air is, is, is obviously air has stuff in it. I mean, I wouldn't be here if that weren't the case. Um, but it's still really fast. Now, it's not, it, I, I rounded this. I had to go out to, um, what, to the five significant digits to get this to be uh, anything other than just one, which is a vacuum. Um, but you know that the light does change speed and refracts in air. That's how you can see like heat waves going off the hood of your car or something like that. That's um, why you the lights twinkle as li twinkle twinkle little star because the light from that star um, is twinkling. If you were out in space where there's no air, the song twinkle twinkle little star, how I wonder what you are. That wouldn't make any sense because the light only twinkles because it's going through the atmosphere and refracting on the way to your eye. And so it bends in its path. Um, that's why you see a mirage, which we'll hopefully talk about later on, is due to refraction because the different temperatures of air, this, this number changes ever so, so slightly. But I got off track. Um, for air, just pretend that it's one. Just go to three sig figs, so one, two, three, um, and just, I know we're not in the vacuum, but just use one in all your calculations and in the lab that I'm going to have you do later on. Um, the index for water now is roughly 1.33. This is all for yellow light. Different colors refract ever so di differently. That's why we see um, a rainbow. The spectrum of colors disperse. This idea of dispersion is the splitting up of the colors because uh, different colors disperse or refract differently. Dispersion. Uh, different colors refract to different amounts. This is written for yellow light, but we're just going to use all the yellow light numbers, even if we're dealing with red light or something like that, just because that we want to just be able to do the calculations. But get different colors bend slightly differently, and that's why they break up into the different colors of the spectrum, a rainbow. Okay, so here's C over V. So for air, I get this, we just use one. For water, it's about N, use a letter N, is 1.33, again, ish. Um, diamond is, is the most, to my knowledge, it's the most optically dense, naturally occurring material. Uh, 2.42 approximately. So that means that it's, it's a lot slower than an, an air or a vacuum. Glass, there's actually different types of glass. So one type of glass has an index of about 1.5, 1 1.52. Um, so, and then of course, you can get this for all sorts of things, and it's temperature dependent also. But this is just to give you an example. So the homework you're going to be doing is using this information to calculate a variety of things. So um, if you know the speed, you know the speed in the vacuum. If you know the wavelength in the vacuum, we usually put a little zero here to represent the wavelength specifically in a vacuum. That can give you the frequency. If you know the speed in the substance, like diamond, and the wavelength in that same substance, you should get the same frequency. All right? Frequency is the one thing that doesn't change in refraction. Let's just quickly do an example. Do I have time? Yeah, sort of. Um, if I have, say, let's just use um, the index um, for a type of glass that has an index of 1.6. So this is glass, a type of a special kind of glass. And I want to know what is the speed in that glass. I am going to use light with a vacuum wavelength of 500 and 89 nanometers. 589 nanometers is, um, that is, not that you care, but it's sodium vapor light. And that's what these numbers are based on. So I'm curious, what's the speed um, in glass for that? Well, uh, in 
equals c, oh, not, yeah, equals c over v, and so v must equal c over n. Remember that the answer's got to be less than 3 times 10 to the 8, because it's going slower. So to do this, uh, take 3 times 10 to the 8 divided by 1.6. Let me grab a calculator. I don't have one handy. Here we go. Uh, let me see, 3 times 10 to the 8 divided by 1.6 equals 1.875, 1.875 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. That is fast, that's 187 million 500,000 meters per second, but it's still a lot slower than that one. And to calculate the frequency, uh, because there's a question on there where I ask you to calculate the frequency, you can either use C over the vacuum wavelength, which would be 3 times 10 to the 8 all over um, 589 times 10 to the negative 9, 589 nanometers. Nano is 10 to the negative 9. So you can either use that and calculate the frequency. I'm not going to do it for you, but it's come out in hertz. It should be on the order of magnitude of 5 times 10 to the 14 um, hertz. So you should double check that. Or you can use the um, speed and the wavelength in the other, in the, um, in the glass. And one thing I didn't show you, which you need to do is, this is the definition of the index of refraction. C over V, but it also equals the vacuum wavelength all over the wavelength in the other material. So it equals the vacuum speed over the speed in the other material. The same number equals the vacuum wavelength. Vacuum is in the numerator and the wavelength in the other material. So you could calculate the wavelength of the um, wavelength of the uh, light in the glass by just taking the vacuum wavelength of 589 nanometers divided by the index of 1.6. It should be shorter because they, they, they bunch up when they slow down. 589 divided by 1.6 is 368 nanometers. 368 nanometers. Still the same frequency. So if I do 1.875 times 10 to the 8 divided by 368 times 10 to the 9, I should get the exact same answer as I got right here because the frequency is the one thing that doesn't change. All right? Um, you should be able to do this homework. If you need to watch this again, <laughs> have fun. Um, ah, okay. God bless. I miss you all. This is uh, it's so lonely. If you look around here, Ah, there's nobody here. Okay. Um, all right. Talk to you later. Bye.